And welcome back to another CBT, CBB talk. Wow, I just messed up that intro. Welcome back to another CBB talk. It's January 7th. It's a Saturday. We got to do this episode quickly before these games start on Saturday. Couldn't do it yesterday. College of the day. Boom. Gonzaga. Shout out to the Zags. They're just going to keep moving up. They got to keep winning. They're gonna, they could get to that one line by the end of the year. If they only lose like one more game, watch them get to that one line. Anyways, we're going to go over these last couple of days and preview Saturday. So we're going to go over these last days quickly because we want to focus on these Saturday and Sunday games this weekend because that's what we're looking forward to. We, we can look at the past, but we're going to want to look forward to the future more. And sorry about the last episode. I think my audio, my audio wasn't using the mic. I didn't even realize that until now. I made sure now this one. Let me make sure again. It's on my USB mic. Okay, so I don't know. For some reason, I was using my computer mic. I thought it would automatically connect to that, but it's not. So I actually got to pay attention about that more. So that's on me for the audio being bad. Let's take a look. On Wednesday, we had that episode on Wednesday, but we haven't looked since. Auburn took an L. I'm not a big believer in Auburn. They have a big game today against Arkansas. But what? Auburn is just a team where they don't have that a star player. The guards, again, remember last year, their guards would take wild shots, and I, I didn't fully believe in them last year. And then this year, they're definitely not as good. They don't have a Jabari. They don't have a Walker Kessler. Um, Brume, Brume is good. Um, that's a, that's a, Georgia's sneakily 11-3, and three, though, a little underrated, under-the-radar team that can compete. Um, Mike White's doing a great job in his first year in um, in Athens. And uh, b- b- both Georgia and TC basketball is doing really good, and then their football is going to be competing for a national championship on Monday, which is very exciting. Move on to a big upset that not a lot of people saw coming, and especially not in this fashion. It was Duke just getting handled at NC State. As a guy who lives again in the triangle, the triangle area, um. I know a lot of state fans. I know a lot of Carolina fans. I know some Duke fans as well. And one of my good friends is a Duke fan, and pretty much he was saying NC State wasn't missing, and Duke it was not hitting. Uh, Whitehead, I, my my Duke friend is saying they need to start Whitehead. Why are they saying Jalen breaks? Lively has no offensive game, and he's getting outplayed by Ryan Young. Lively starts and only plays 13 minutes. Um, they start Mark Mitchell, Jeremy Roach, Jalen Blakes. They start a big lineup, and then uh, to Cravion Smith and Jarko Joyner, uh, both had big games and eighteen on the bench for Burns. <laughs> NC State, you know, they've struggled to open up ACC play this year. And that's a huge win against Duke, and Duke drops their fourth. Um, I think they should drop out of the rankings. They've lost at Wake and NC State. They've lost two ACC games. They just haven't looked like a great team. Shire's struggling in his first year. Again, it's understandable, a little bit of a struggle, but you also had the number one recruiting class in the nation, and you're 11-4 and four right now, haven't looked amazing throughout the year. So, yes, if I was a Duke fan, I'd be a little worried how it competing in the ACC. The ACC has been weak. Virginia's lost a game this week. Miami lost a game this week. Carolina has lost games already. It's wide open. I think Clemson and Pitt are, under, are the only two undefeated teams left in the ACC, um, in ACC play. It's wide open. The ACC is not at the strongest this year. Iowa State got a big win on the road at Oklahoma. Again, Big 12, you know, going to always have competitive games. This Iowa State team is good. TJ Ossenberger has turned his team around two years last year, making the uh, Sweet 16 and this year looking like a top 25 team. Caleb Grill, I love the hair, great shooter. Miami gets upset at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, I think that was their first ACC win of the year. Uh, Wong wasn't amazing, and um, they just caught Wong on the road. They lose by six. They try to make it run in that second half. Georgia Tech prevails. Miami, I still think it might be the best team in the ACC. Um, that that's just a, some you're gonna lose some on the road there. Definitely not one you want to lose to a one of the weaker teams in the ACC in Georgia Tech. Not totally concerned about that. I'm more concerned about Duke. Michigan picked up a much needed win at home against Penn State. 
Hunter Dickinson's been good. That was a great match between him and Pickett. Um, two of the best players in the Big Ten. Michigan's starting to get better wins. They're up to nine and five on the year. They did start out slow last year and make the tournament. So I would never never say never when you're dealing with Michigan because they are a team that um you know won't need doesn't need to have an amazing regular season. They just need to do well in the Big Ten, finish top seven in the Big Ten, and you'll probably make the tournament. Missouri took an L in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Ricky Council had a big game, 25. Again, we do not know Nick Smith. He could be suiting up any game, or he could be out for the rest of the season. We haven't had a final word on him. Arkansas is not healthy, but a big game from Ricky Council. Anthony Beck was good. Debo Davis was good. Um, Missouri's still a good team. I think this game helped prove that they were up seven at half. And they just, Arkansas started hitting in that second half. 47 points actually put up in the second half. It's very w- good, very impressive from Arkansas. I was wearing their shirt last episode, got them the win. But Missouri's still good. I love the way they're playing this year, proving a lot of people wrong. And that loss doesn't make me think too much less of them because um, they controlled that first half and Arkansas hit in the second half on the road in Fayetteville. That's a very tough place to play. But the biggest, probably not maybe not the biggest upset, but one of the biggest bigger results was Providence getting another one, another upset, and UConn take, losing their second straight after being fourteen and zero to start out the year. Now they've lost two in a row, and Providence hands them another loss. Providence is one of the hottest teams in college basketball. I was saying that last episode how they won like seven eight in a row. Ed Cooley's doing it again, Mister Cool, Bryce Hopkins, an absolute steal. Mentioned that on the last episode now. He's been really good after averaging like six minutes a game at Kentucky. He 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 put twenty seven in this one. Providence is another team that we doubted last year. I doubted them in the tournament. I had them get an upset first round, end up making it to the Sweet Sixteen, and um people would down them again this year. After losing all five starters, you're not expecting that team to bounce back in the same caliber as they were last year. And look, right now they're at the top of the big. Big East are five and zero. They're looking really good and big uh, so far. Uh, shout out to Bryce Hopkins because this dude is a beast. Kentucky, you shouldn't have let him walk. And on UConn's end, I'm still not. I'm not totally um, worried. Again, you played at Xavier at Providence. Those are two good teams on the road in Big East. Those are going to be tough games. Hopefully, they can bounce back. I'm not sure who they play today. I'm pretty sure it is someone good. They play like a. I don't actually know who they play. They probably play like a Marquette. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Marquette. Clemson picked up a win at VTech. VTech struggled these last couple of games. And then another big result is TCU upset in Baylor on the road. Shout out to Mike Miles. This dude is a beast. If it wasn't for Jalen Wilson, I think he'd be the front runner for Big 12 Player of the Year. I heard someone say, yes, their only loss is to Northwestern State, and that's the reason why they're not undefeated right now. And while that is, you know, a terrible loss to have, they didn't have Mike Miles or Damon Ball, pretty much their two best players in that game. No excuse to lose to Northwestern State, but imagine if they just had one of those players. They could be undefeated right now and maybe be the number one-ranked team in the country. Um, This team gets out done. They're electric offense. They got great guards. They get up and down the court, have a good good enough bigs to get it done, and Baylor's just not a same caliber team as they've been these last couple of years. Um, Keontae George is finally um getting getting into his own, getting comfortable. Twenty seven in this one, Baylor's just struggled. They could, again, I don't think they're going to be on the bottom of the Big Twelve, but they they've started out what zero and two, zero and three in the Big Twelve. That's a little. I think they're zero and two in the Big Twelve. A little concerning to start off the year. But I wouldn't sell my Baylor stock quite yet. They're they're just getting there. Um, they're they're gonna need experience. Hopefully, they can get more uh healthier throughout the year. Moving on to Tuesday, Maryland's offense sucks. So I'm gonna say Rutgers picks up another win in the Jersey Mike's uh, arena. Going through Thursday. Thursday wasn't as good as Wednesday, but Purdue. They didn't want to pull a UConn, and they didn't. They don't lose two in a row. They get it on the road after a huge shot from Fletcher Lawyer. Gets them the win. This Ohio State team, I wouldn't change my opinions on them at all. 
Um, that's a that's a tough game. Bryce Sensible is taking that Malachi Branham type step from last year. A freshman that comes in under the radar, a four probably a four star recruit, gets into that starting role and blossoms into a star and probably a one and done prospect. Really good in this one. Brain Smith was good in the first half. Zach E wasn't himself, and I was surprised because um Ohio State lacks that size to play against them, but um, so good for Purdue pulling this one now. I did not see that coming. I thought how State was going to get it done. A big shot from Fletcher Lawyer to um give him the lead and, and end up winning the game. Um, yeah, Purdue, great win, keeps you in this elite um tier and probably the best in the Big Ten. That's a huge win for them. And Ohio State couldn't get it done, but um, not too worried about them. Really not worried though. But I talked about that mid-major game. FAU gets another win at home against UAB, the best two teams in Conference USA. 36 from Davis. What a game. Jelly Walker had 21. A great match between those two teams. Shout out to FAU. They're ranked high in the net for a reason. 13-1 this year. And um, they couldn't make a case if they somehow if they start winning out and a, U, U, UAB wins the Conference Tournament. Conference USA has a chance of being a two-bid two bid league which would be very surprising because that is always a one-bid league. Iowa upsets Indiana on the road. Um, shout out to Chris Murray with a massive game, um, raising his draft stock just like his brother did last year. Indiana's just been not, not amazing this year, a little underwhelming. This is their fourth loss already. Chris Murray at 30. Trace Jackson at 30 as well. Indiana needs more help because right now it's all TJD and um tough loss there for Indiana for sure. Right now, not my list of top 25 teams. UCLA holds on the battle for LA against USC. Jalen Clark hits a big shot to end up winning the game. Hits a big three. They score 16 points in the second half and win. That is insane. Um, great second half from USC. Just struggles that first half, and they end up losing sixty to fifty eight. UCLA hangs on, and that's just games where if shots aren't falling, you still get the win. Um, that's very impressive. Shout out to UCLA. Them versus Arizona game. I can't wait for that matchup because those two teams are by far the best. Gonzaga. And why my Gonzaga should they barely hold on to beat San Francisco on the road? They went by two. They were down ten at half. Timmy um and Bolton both had big games. San Fran was pulled off a big upset. And again, this Gonzaga team, if they can keep winning games, they're gonna keep moving up in the rankings, in the polls. But this one's close. Um against the San Fran team is not as good as last year, probably not a tournament team, and only win by two. Not not great. And you and here's almost one by three. So a lot of almost upsets. Nothing really yesterday worth even talking about. So we're gonna and we're gonna after this quick break, we're gonna be looking at, you know, today, Saturday, and maybe Sunday. I'm not even sure what's Sunday, but we'll look into it. Let's go. All right, so let's go after these Saturday games. I'll give you my picks. I'll go over the real big notable ones. Starting at 12 o'clock on Fox, it's Creighton at UConn. UConn's up two in a row. U- Creighton's won three in a row. These teams are going in opposite directions right now. UConn's minus seven. I was I would I would bet Creighton plus seven, but I think UConn's going to win this game. They need this one. Kulk Brenner versus Sonogo is going to be the match to watch out for. Creighton does match up very well against UConn, so this could be upset alert. Again, Creighton went on a bad losing streak after losing Kalkbrenner for a couple games, but they've got healthy, and they're starting to play back to what you expected, what you saw in Maui when Creighton um, made it to the championship game there. Texas goes on the road at Oklahoma State. Chris Beer was officially fired, which I'm not too surprised about. Again, it wasn't really something I wanted to talk about that much because I thought we all saw that coming, so nothing really too shocking there. Um, hope Texas can, you know, find their next coach if they keep their current one or if they're going to go out and get someone new. Chris Beard had his dream job and lost it all. Um, that's all I got to say about that. Oklahoma State's plus three at home. They played really well against Kansas last weekend. We'll see how they do today. 
on CBS, Vanderbilt goes to play Missouri. Missouri try to get another win there. Don't want to drop one at home to a bad team. At 1 o'clock on ESPN, you have Kentucky going at Bama. Kentucky need If Kentucky can win this game, this changes my complete thought about them. But if they lose, this is their fifth loss of the year. Not really any outstanding road wins. And uh, Alabama just trying to get another win. They have two losses on the year so far. I think Alabama minus six is the play. You, it's a Coleman call seems a tough go place to go play in Tuscaloosa. Give me Bama to win by at least six. I I I'm not totally confident in that play, but if I had to pick that game, I would take Bama. I would lay the points. Only as being in you, another top 25 matchup against two very hot teams in the Big 12. It's Iowa State at TCU. Um, both teams coming off tough wins on Wednesday. And um, TCU's hosting this game. I'm going to have TCU, but five and a half is tough. I might not, I, I might, uh, I might um, not, I'm not going to lay the points there. I'll, I'll take Iowa State plus five and a half, but give me TCU to win this game. Like Miles playing really well. It's an interesting matchup. Gabe Kalsher, Caleb Grill. This T- Iowa State team's gritty. They're going to make tough shots. Um, but I like how TCU gets up and down the floor and is going to push the ball with their guards. Mike Miles is going to be a problem for Iowa State. I think TCU is going to win this game, but Iowa State will keep it close. Um, and they could win this game. I wouldn't be too surprised. Mississippi, oh, Mississippi State, who's lost now three in a row, goes plays Ole Miss. Mississippi State needs that one to keep their tournament resume alive. Michigan at Michigan State on Fox at 2.30. A battle of Michigan here. Both teams playing well of recent. Michigan State's finally getting back to being healthy. I think they're going to pull this one out. Minus three and a half. Give me the points. Michigan's playing well of recent, but I think they can match up Hunter Dickinson well. And can the others come out from Michigan and play well? That's what is main concern for me. I, I don't believe in really everyone but um Hunter Dickinson on that team. Trying to find more games. Uh Louisville still only won two games. Jeez. Uh the undefeated teams in the ACC square for four. Clemson, Pitt. Both these teams shot build tournament resumes. Pitt at home. That that arena was crazy against Virginia. Crazy against UNC. I'm expecting it again today. Give me Pitt minus three against Clemson. They've been playing really well. And, um, again, when I saw them come back against Virginia, I think they're playing with fire in them. Jeff Cable's got this team playing well. And I, I think they'll I think they get that win against Clemson. Both teams playing really well undefeated in that ACC. Xavier goes on the road at Villanova. And they are actually underdogs. Surprising me, Villanova is eight and seven on the year. Again, they're, they're just not healthy. They've been going through it with injuries. Um, Count Neptu trying to find his way around this team so far. Who will I go with in this one? This, this is a really tough one to predict because Xavier had a huge win last weekend. Can they do it again is my question. Give me Xavier to win this game on the road. Villanova needs this one because if you drop to eight and eight, you are not, you are not, you need to go steep uphill. You need to start, you know, accelerating really fast. And this, if they can get this one, this starts the kick to get to the top of that mountain to get back to where they Villanova basketball is used to being at. My Virginia, my Virginia Cavaliers need to pick up a win at Sy- uh, at home against Syracuse because if not, that that one that one that one's gonna hurt. Um, I would really give up all hope on this Virginia team. Kansas goes on the road at West Virginia. Watch out for that one. West Virginia's only plus one and a half. They could West Virginia struggled in Big Twelve play. I think Kansas will win that one. And then the battle of um former so associates coaches, um, not former coaches, but they coached together. Kansas State Baylor. This is a tough one. Kansas State's played so well of recent. Baylor hasn't. Kansas State coming off a big win earlier this week against Texas. Had a crazy offense performance. Keontae Johnson versus Keontae George. The battle of Keontae's. Give me Kansas State plus six and a half in this one. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to predict a winner. Just give me six and a half on Kansas State. I would not bet that maybe, but if I, I, I'm just going to say plus six and a half. 
because I don't know. I can see Baylor some just coming out hot and getting that win. But Kansas State is familiar with that Baylor team, and Baylor has not looked good. So I wouldn't be too surprised if Kansas State wins that game. That's not that's not what I just wouldn't be. I wouldn't be shocked. A big one in eight thirty on SEC Network is Arkansas at Auburn. You is one of the toughest places to play is Auburn. They're home, they have one of the best home court advantages. They haven't been good. Auburn's minus two and a half. I don't think Auburn's better than Arkansas. No way. But going, you it's you can't win in Auburn. So I'm gonna have Auburn win this game because you just don't win in there. It's one of the best home court advantages in college basketball. I don't think they're a better team, but that home court might just you know give them a little push. And UNLV plays New Mexico. New Mexico trying to drop not drop two in a row. UNLV has been good, but they've struck. They started out what 11 no 10 and 0 this year. Good and bad on the Mountain West, but I would have New Mexico win that. I'll check if there's any games on Sunday. I'm not even totally sure. Big NFL week today is two games today. You have Iowa Rutgers. There's always some Big Ten games on Sundays. You got uh, three Big Ten games. It looks like maybe more. Uh, is it three? Be Big Ten games? Yeah, no, four Big Ten games. Yeah, you have uh, Iowa Rutgers. That's a, that's a decent one. Uh, both teams trying to get back uh, more wins. It's in Jersey Mike's Arena, so Rutgers is going to win that game. The Ohio State goes to play Maryland. Maryland sucked so much ass recently. Probably Ohio State's going to win that one. And then Purdue plays at Penn State. But Purdue, I mean, that's a tough, Penn State's good this year, but uh, Purdue should win that one. So that's really it. Good weekend in college basketball. Great weekend in sports in general. We'll see if uh, your favorite team clinch spot in the playoffs. And uh, it's just great to hear the good news about DeMar Hamlin. Um, I'm rooting for the Jags today because I don't want the Titans to make the playoffs. Like they're not gonna do shit in the playoffs, and they've lost like seven, eight, six, seven, eight in a row. I don't know, sure, something around that. They don't deserve to make it. Um, I highly doubt Josh Dobbs is gonna come out in here and just uh go fed. I highly doubt it. I believe in T Law more. Anyways, thanks for watching another episode of CBB Talk number twelve. I believe I hope it's number twelve because it would be really bad if it was number number eleven or some. I think it's number twelve. Anyways, thanks for watching. Peace out. Love you guys. Bye.